for the last year, despite the challenges that we have all faced, the Tucson Symphony Orchestra has worked hard to provide beautiful music for you, our cherished patrons. Through it all, you've gotten to see the members of the TSO up close from the comfort of your home. In a time when we weren't able to be together in person, we connected through the digital realm. But now, it's time for us to get back to doing what we do best. The Tucson Symphony Orchestra is returning to the stage for the 2021-2022 season, and you're not going to want to miss a single note. Hello everyone, and welcome to the official launch of the Tucson Symphony Orchestra's 2021-2022 season. My name is Ben Nisbet, and I'm here with our music director, Jose Luis Gomez, to tell you about the incredible musical offerings that we have in store for you. Jose, you have to be thrilled that you are returning to the podium to lead Tucson's crown jewel of culture, the Tucson Symphony Orchestra. Hi, Ben. Yes, indeed, I'm thrilled, and you know, I can't wait to be you know, on stage with our wonderful musicians. I think you know, we are thriving to that element of live music that you know, have been missing a lot during the pandemic, and especially connected with the fantastic audience of the Tucson Symphony Orchestra. Today, we are going to give you a virtual tour of a season that we are extremely proud of. Think of it as a year-long playlist of the greatest music ever written, some music that you know and love, and some music that you might not have ever heard, but that you will no doubt come to love, all performed by a world-class orchestra in the dynamic and incredible cast of guest artists. And it's all 100% live. That's right. I've created a season that is a celebration of our return to the stage, and I, I can't wait to share it with everyone. Well, without any further ado, let's start in September with our season opening concert and the first offering of our classic series featuring William Grant Still's Festive Overture, the brilliant trumpet soloist Pacho Flores, and Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. Yes, we will start with this fantastic overture, the Festive Overture of William Grant Still, an American composer that is incredible and it's a great opportunity to show his music and also you know, the opening uh, concert of the Tucson Symphony will have a fantastic friend of the orchestra. It's Pacho Flores, a wonderful, one of the best trumpet players in the world. And, you know, he, we're incredibly happy to have him back. And the first time he came with the, um, with, with a concerto was written for him by Arturo Marquez, and it was a huge success. This time he's coming back also with another, another piece that was written for him from a fellow Venezuelan composer, Efraín Osher, Danzas Latinas. And he will be performing also another piece written by himself as well. So this is a great opportunity to listen to a lot of Latin influenced music in the first half of the concert. We're gonna end the concert with a fantastic symphony, the symphony number no. four by Tchaikovsky, which is a bombastic exuberance of sound and, and music. The very next weekend, we will kick off our Masterworks series by welcoming back one of the most popular guest artists in recent memory. That's right, it's the Estonian bassoon virtuoso Martin Kuskman. He will join us for two concertos, one by Mozart and one by Richard Strauss, in which we also will feature the principal clarinet of the orchestra, Dario Brignoli. We will close the program with a performance of Johannes Brahms' romantic third symphony. The following week, Martin Kuskman will be joining us to help launch two brand new initiatives, the New Works Rework series, and the Artist in Residence program. What can we expect from that, Jose? Yes, I think, you know, the pandemic has given us the opportunity to um, create, you know, new ideas and to be inventive. And the New Works Rework is one of those ideas that we want to deploy. It's a series that explores repertoire in a new, unexpected approach. Works by composers that you may know already and maybe in miniature settings of other grand works and avant-garde exploration by composers and performers. It's like seeing more sides than from the coin than just two sides. And you know, all of this together with the Artist in Residence initiative with Martin Kuzman being our first Artist in Residence means that our Artist in Residence will curate you know, this program, will, will bring the creativity and the innovation you know, to, the, to the program and also will lead us through all the inputs that made this, you know, his ideas come to life in the concert. The second installment of our classic concert series features Mozart's final symphony, the Jupiter, and what is perhaps the greatest concerto ever written for the cello, Antonin Dvorak's concerto in B minor. 
Yes, and this concerto is going to be played by another friend of the orchestra, Amit Pellet, a soloist that uh, you know has been with us many times, and and you know his his musicality is beyond words. Uh, we will open also the uh, the program with a with a very interesting work by a composer called Robert Muczynski. Uh, Robert Muczynski was a famous composition professor of the U of A that the TSO commissioned many works you know, the, the, during the 70s and the 80s. And so this is an opportunity to revisit you know, the fantastic music of Robert Muczynski, a local composer from Tucson to the audience of Tucson. For our second concert on the Masterworks series, we will shine the spotlight on the orchestra with a program featuring the music of Franz Liszt, Richard Wagner, and one of Mozart's most iconic symphonies. Yes, we will have a connection between the two first pieces with the music of uh, Franz Liszt and the music of Wagner. As you know, Liszt and Wagner were, um, uh, were connected by family because uh, Wagner, uh, Richard Wagner uh, married um, Liszt's daughter. And the first piece by, of the program, the Black Gondola by Liszt, is a little bit of a recreation of what um, Franz Liszt thought and the emotion that he thought, you know, imagining when Richard Wagner died. And, um, and this particular you know, beautiful piece was all arranged for orchestra because it's original for piano by an American composer, John Adams, one of the most famous living composers of America. Um, from Wagner, we will hear the Siegfried Idyll, a beautiful gift that he gave to his wife, Franz Liszt's daughter. And uh, we have uh, a very fantastic symphony to end the program, which is a Mozart Symphony Number no. 40, that symphony in G minor, which all of you know and, and, and know very well. Our third classic series concert will feature two guest artists as well as a TSO premiere. We're thrilled to present the TSO premiere of a piece that we helped commission. It's the Jonathan Leshnov Piano Concerto. Jonathan Leshnov is another great living American composer. And we have, as a soloist, a Tucson favorite, Joyce Yang, the uh, fantastic prize winner of the um, Van Kleiber competition. To co open the concert, we have um, a rising star composer also from America, Gabriela Lina Frank. Um, her, the work that we'll be performing is the Elegia Andina. The brilliant young conductor who is be conducting, will be conducting this concert is Jessica Cottis from England. And she will lead the orchestra and we, with a fantastic piece at the end, which is the Rizvi Korsakov Scheherazade. As the calendar turns to December, the TSO will take a musical trip to a country that I know holds a special place in your heart, Jose. Yes, we will take a very, well, not short, it's gonna be very intense, and uh, the, the amount of time is gonna be enough of a trip to Italy, a country that I, I love very much. As you know, my wife is from Italy, uh, the soprano Federica Lombardi, and we will be playing music that was inspired by Italy by many composers. And to, to name some of them, we have the Carnival Overture by Berlioz, the Capriccio Italiano of Tchaikovsky, and then a piece written by an Italian composer, Ottorino Respighi's Roman Festival. And to end the program, we will have the Wilhelm Tell Overture by Giochino Rossini, which is an overture that everybody knows very well, and I'm sure you're gonna be thrilled with this performance. Every year, the TSO celebrates the holidays with Handel's Messiah. And once again, we will do just that. But this year, we've got so much more in store for the holiday season. Indeed, this year, in addition to the beautiful music of the Messiah with arias, with fantastic, fantastic soloists that we will have, we're going to give you also the gift of classical composers, which, you know, um, wrote music inspired by Christmas holiday. Um, including the Vaughan Williams, Green Sleeves, and much more pieces. And this concert is the perfect way to celebrate holiday spirit through music. We'll be ringing in the new year with our third Masterworks concert, where we will celebrate one of music's great prodigies, Felix Mendelssohn. That's right. And we will also feature the TSO premiere of a work by the African composer Phila Sowandi, as part of our focus highlighting underrepresented composers and artists. So Wandi's inspiring African suite will prove to be an excellent companion to Mendelssohn's youthful and energetic first symphony. It's always a big deal when we are able to perform one of Gustav Mahler's monumental symphonies. And in 2022, 
we are pleased to present his fourth symphony. Yes, and we will start this concert with a piece by another American composer. It's, the piece is called Dances in the Cane Breaks by Florence Price. And we will have also another um, American composer, Samuel Barber, with his piece Knoxville Summer of 1915, which features a soprano soloist. This time it's going to be the fantastic American soprano Nicole Cabell, which will also sing the uh, beautiful last movement of the Mahler Symphony No. 4. Let's get back to the Masterwork series, where our concertmaster, Lauren Roth, will take center stage in a performance of Igor Stravinsky's electrifying neoclassical violin concerto. Lauren is truly a violin virtuoso. I mean, she's, she's amazing. We all love her. But she's not the only violin virtuoso you will hear in this concert, as we also will perform an overture by Joseph Bologna, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. We will also welcome the beginning of the spring with Robert Schumann's first symphony, which is named for the season. For our sixth classic concert, we are going dancing. Yes, we're going dancing and we will be dancing to a diverse and thrilling program. We will waltz with the Johann Strauss D. Fledermaus Overture and we will go to the ball with Richard Strauss waltzes from Der Rassen Cavalier. We will also travel to Harlem and dance with Duke Ellington, and we will perform the dances for string orchestra of a native Tucsonian, Ulysses K. We will finish the evening dancing with Maurice Ravel's magical Lavals. For our next classic concert, we will perform Brahms' final symphony, and we will also be joined by a young superstar of the violin, Paul Huang. Yes, this is going to be first visit to Tucson by Paul Huang. He's a fantastic American violinist and performing the Shostakovich Concerto Number no. 1, it's a real treat because that concerto is incredible and it's a, it's a fantastic piece to listen to. Brahms Symphony Number no. 4 will close our cycle of Brahms symphonies and I'm very excited to play this beautiful, beautiful symphony. Our final Masterworks concert is all about youth and excitement. Absolutely. A recent graduate from our Young Composers project, as well as a winner of our Young Artists competition, the harpist Claire Tai, will perform a concerto that she wrote for the TSO. And she will also join our principal flutist, uh, Sasha Lipe, for a performance of Mozart's concerto for, for flute and harp. We will also hear Prokofiev's youthful take on Mozart's style with his classical symphony. For our final concert of the year, we will celebrate the very best of the early German romantics with Mendelssohn and Schubert. Indeed, we will have the music of uh, Mendelssohn with the uh, Midsummer Night Stream incidental music. And also we will have the um, symphony number no. eight or nine, depending on the catalog of Schubert called The Great. One of the biggest examples of romanticism in a symphony uh, language. We would like to thank you all for joining us today for this virtual tour of our upcoming season. We've all been waiting for a return to live music, and as you can see, good things do indeed come to those who wait. We're committed to returning to the stage safely for everyone, so log on to tucsonsymphony.org for information about dates, tickets, and safety policies, and we hope that you can all join us very soon. Thank you everyone for being with us in during this very special season launch and we can wait to reconnect with all of you through live music with the Tucson Symphony Orchestra. Thank you, Ben, and see you at the concerts. <laughs>